Oh, we finally got a gold rally today. This is Mike Swantz of WallStreetWinner.com, and it's good to see that. Gold fell below 1700 last week and came back above it. Uh, but is this rally sustainable? As I talked about Sunday, my favorite indicator, the GDX divided gold ratio, was not giving a buy signal at that time, but it can still move up for a little while, even without that, and maybe things will change. It's a little bit of mixed signals going on. And so for clarity, what I want to do today is talk with one of my buddies, Jordan Roy Byrne, one of the leading gold trend experts, uses charts, technical analysis. Let's talk with Jordan Roy Byrne. Hello, Jordan. How are you doing? Hey, Mike. I'm great. How are you? Yeah, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. I got to tell you, it's been a wild year uh, for the stock market and for gold. I mean, I got to tell you, the first quarter was tremendous for gold. It had a huge rally. I was really excited to see my gold holdings go up. And then, you know, it's peaked out and had a correction. Uh, fell below 1700 for a few days last week and then bounced back up. And, you know, these generations are really frustrating. I'm not honestly sure myself. <laughs> when it's going to be that the big blast off that goes up for months and months and months actually happens. I don't know if that's starting now or starting next year. I, I don't really have a firm opinion. So I really wanted to talk with you uh, about what your take is on what's going on and uh, the last article you wrote about your long-term indicator for gold. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, thanks so much for having me, Mike. Um, yeah, I think – to, I mean, there's a lot of things we could talk about, but I think looking at the very, very big picture, like a 30,000-foot view, and the reality is we know that historically there's these long-term market cycles where you have a period of a decade or two where the stock market's in a secular bull. It's going up, up, and up for the most part, making higher highs consistently. And during that period, commodities and hard assets, they're – trending lower they're going sideways they're not making higher highs then you there's periods where you have the opposite like 1968 to 1982 uh 2000 to 2009 or 2000 to 2011 uh those are periods when you're in a secular bear for the stock market so the stock market was not making new highs it was trading sideways on a very long-term basis and during that period you had commodity prices in gold making higher highs and outperforming significantly. And that also includes the, uh, uh, we had a secular bear in the stock market from 1929 to 1942. So, um, and commodities kind of overlapped. They bottomed in 1933, peaked in 1951. Uh, the secular bull, in my opinion, in stock started in 42. So it overlapped a little bit during that period. But the reason why this is important to us today, Mike, as far as uh, gold bugs and gold investors is, Gold has performed, and it's performed okay in the last five or six years. Yes, it's trended higher. But if you look at where gold stocks and silver are right now, uh, you know their five- or ten-year performance has not been great, especially after the uh, impact of the severe decline that we've seen in the last three or four months. And so we have not seen gold break out to a new all-time high. It's basically trading at the same level as it was 11 years ago. Sure, it, it did in 2020 and also in March or April. I mean, it did trade above 1900 briefly, but the market gold, that is, has not broken out convincingly and run past that 1900 level yet. And that's only going to happen if the stock market falls into a secular bear market which is possible. And so you can see I have a chart there in the article. If you look at the 40-month moving average for the S&P, it's not always the case, but the majority of the time during a secular bull market for stocks, the 40-month moving average acts as support. I mean, you could go back to 2009, 2010, or 2011. The only time the market went below the 40-month moving average was during COVID, but it it, it was very brief because we had it, we rebounded significantly very, very quickly. And so we can see if we look at when secular bear markets began, you know, after 1929, after 1968, after 2000, the S&P in that bear market, initial, you know, the initial phase, it fell below the 40-month moving average convincingly. So that's one signal that tells us that it's in a secular bear market. So that's something that we'll have to watch for over the next 
three to six months or so. Now, the stock market is actually, if you look at the a template of bear markets during secular bear markets, uh, the stock market on average, I mean, it has a 20, 23% decline. Then it has a bear market rally where it rallies back up to the 200-day moving average. And well, that, that could be happening like, now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's following this pattern exactly. And actually the average of when it tests the 200-day moving average, according to these six past bear market, I mean, in, in one case it happened in, uh, uh, what was it, uh, after 1937 it rallied back. It happened, I think, in like three or five months. But if you look at the average of these six times it did that, it comes out to about the average and median comes out to about seven, seven months, seven and a half months. Right now, we're basically seven months exactly into this bear market. And we look after today. And if you look at the stock market, yeah, it's been rebounding. It's pushing up. It's only four percent or so away from the 200 day moving average. So it's following a historical pattern. So what I think is going to happen, Mike, is this rally will continue for you know, another week or so. Uh, the market's going to hit that resistance, and then the market is going to sell off probably as we go into the end of the summer, Labor Day, you know, before the September Fed meeting. And so the question is, if the stock market is still in a secular bull, it's probably going to make a double bottom at 3,600. It's going to go down, retest it, but then it'll go back up. Uh, the economy is not, you know, the economy is going to recover. They'll print money again. Inflation's coming down, at least temporarily for a variety of reasons. And so maybe in that scenario, the secular bull continues for at least a couple more years. However, I think the more likely scenario is that the market is going to, the stock market that is, is going to roll over. It's going to lose 3,600. So we're going to be in one of those, you know, 40% type bear markets. And so it's so important, Mike, because if that happens in the coming months, that tells you that we're going to be in a new secular bull market for gold and resources. And so, I mean, th this this is so important uh, as far as, you know, what could happen in the coming months. And so that's why it's it's really the number one long-term indicator. And that's – and so the, the problem for gold and gold stocks and silver recently – I mean, yes, they've had some periods of really, really good performance, but on a long-term basis, they haven't been able to perform – because the economy's been doing okay, the stock market was in a secular bull market. I mean, just look at what happened after 2020. We had an amazing four-month run in precious metals, but the stock market kept moving higher and higher uh, as we've been correcting in precious metals. So, I mean, I don't mean to talk circles around the point, but it's so significant. Tell me what is going to happen with the stock market over the coming months, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a, a you know a long-term assessment for hard assets and gold especially if the stock market falls into a secular bear it loses 3600 in that 40 month moving average uh, that's going to put hard assets and gold gold stocks in really good position for the next 10 years because one other thing mike if you look at the best performance in gold stocks the best cyclical performance we're not talking about one or two year performance but when it had good performance for five five or four or five or seven years those periods all of those except one, uh, except one time, which was kind of in the mid-1960s, where we were really close to a secular bear. But aside from that, if you look at the best performance in gold stocks, it was during secular bear markets in stocks. You, know, you have the 2000s, uh, the, you know, the 1970s, and the 1930s. So I know, I know that's a really long answer, but that's what I'm focused on. That's what I'm looking at at this point. No, it's a, it's a great answer. I mean, very specific. Um, and when I look at this chart that you have, and you, you mentioned the secular bear market and the stock market from 2000 uh, to 2012 you have on here, um, and I scroll down and I see the gold stocks performance versus the S&P 500, and I see that this went up during that time, and, it, and on the chart, it doesn't look like a big move. Because the move in the 1970s, you know, was so huge from from one to nine to ten, you know, one to ten almost. And uh, w what people may may not uh, understand is that when gold stocks outperform the S&P 500 from 2000 to 2012, 
Uh, they what that means is that they went up more than the Dow. The Dow did bad that decade. Wonder stocks like Cisco didn't do anything after the market peaked in 1999. And gold went from under $300 an ounce when I first bought it in 2002 to over 1,000, a three times move, a triple, more than a triple the, the mining stocks did. And what I'm trying to say is that the chart shows the outperformance, the relative strength outperformance, but it's it, the, the the people don't know how big that meant, what how huge that is for gold in the mining stocks, and now you can see the relative strength plot going sideways for six years in a position where it could break out, and I think it would break out for sure if uh, the market falls below that four uh, that moving average. Uh, was it the forty week or four hundred day? For, forty month. 40 month. Yeah, your 40 month moving average and frankly I think it's going to happen not not next week. <laughs> but I do think uh, we're in the process of heading to that. You know, we're getting a a rally now that's got people you know excited, but 3600 or 3681 isn't that far away really uh from where we are and we could break that in the fall or next year or you know, or sooner if something uh really bad happens, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, it, and it, it, you made a good point. Yeah, it 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 takes a little time. It's part of a process, and so short term, I do think we have a little bit more upside in the S and P. But the S and P can rally back to the two hundred day moving average and then fail. And it, it it's oh it's, yeah, it's, it's it's surprising to think about it, Mike. But the S and P rallied back to the two hundred day moving average even after the nineteen thirty seven peak and after the nineteen twenty nine peak after nineteen twenty nine. The, 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 the crash was the beginning of the bear market, which is unusual. Usually it's in the middle or, or a little bit past the middle. But even after the crash at the beginning of the 29 bear market, the market rallied back up to the 200-day moving average. And then it failed and rolled over again. And that, like I said, I mean, that's happened in all the – you look at the six, you know, these secular bear markets. They had two significant – bear markets within them. So these six historical bear markets, they all rallied back up to the 200-day moving average. It, ha it happened after the tech bust, and even 2007 to 2009, that horrible bear market, that horrible period, the market rallied back up to the 200-day moving average. So in a bear market, that's a sell signal. And so, you know, the fundamentals behind it, if we, you know, the Fed right now, they're talking tough. They want to be tough on inflation, but there's if this plays out, you know how how we think uh, the market fails at the 200-day moving average. It's rolling over, you know, at the end of summer into the fall. It's threatening to make lower lows. The psychology is going to change from you know inflation is a problem to you know holy crap when we're in a bad recession I might lose my job. You know the Fed's got to start printing money, and you know if and when that happens, that's going to be really bullish for precious metals and not you know. Yes, it'll help the economy eventually, but the Fed will have to slash rates and print money because the economy is doing really poorly. I mean, that that isn't by itself going to bring the stock market out of this secular bear market that it will have fallen into. Uh, so, you you know, you, you can, if you look historically during bear markets when the Fed is cutting rates, you, usually they start doing that around the middle of the bear market. But it's not, in, you know, it, it's not until the end of the recession when it really starts to help the economy and the market start to rebound and recover. So that's one thing to point out because a lot of people will just assume, well, okay, well, the Fed's cutting rates again. They're printing money, buy stocks. Yes, they can have a short-term rally, you know, from that news. But if the economy hasn't bottomed out yet, I mean, that's that's not an immediate catalyst uh, for the stock market. But it is an immediate catalyst for precious metals, because I've studied, and I think I mentioned it in that article, that um, if you look at, you know, hi historically, I mean, it's not in every bear market, but historically, uh, gold or gold stocks, you know, before the time, before 1971, they tend to bottom around the time the Fed starts cutting rates, you know, and that that can be around, tw you know, a couple times it was 12 months. Uh, into the bear market, so 12 months is going to bring us into into December. You know, right now the market is anticipating that there will be 
rate cuts in Q1 of next year. But if we see the stock market roll over again, if we see more bad economic news, the market is going to anticipate those rate cuts sooner and sooner. So that's what I'm thinking. You know, if the Fed can hike hike rates again, I think September will be the that's the next meeting. To me, that's if they hike rates, that's going to be the last rate hike, and I think they could cut as soon as November. So again, this this next three to six months, I mean, this is going to be really important because we could get some signals that have implications for the next decade, implications for many many years. Yeah, I like that first green arrow on the on the chart you got right here but in reverse <laughs> stocks down gold up uh well thanks for taking the time to talk with me and i highly recommend uh people uh if they have not yet done so uh go to your website the dailygold.com and then get your free book uh if they sign up uh for your free email updates and you do youtube videos too uh all kinds of updates and it's always great to uh talk with you jordan yeah, always a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks so much for having me, Mike.